Welcome, welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. Beautiful word in Arabic. And assalamu alaikum once again. You know the word ahlan wa sahlan in Arabic, uh, we, the Arabs used to use it even before Muhammad sallallahu came out. And uh, Islam loves to, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa brings to us new guidance, uh, we find that it keeps the beautiful things that people, people's customs used to share. And the word ahlan wa sahlan doesn't just mean welcome. It means you are family or consider yourself family and your presence with us is very easy. So be comfortable. A beautiful statement which Islam kept and we say it to each other. And the reason why I opened it up with this is because we're talking about the beautiful verses in Surah Al-Hujurat about the character of a Muslim, which is based on faith and belief in Allah. If you believe in Allah and you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you would love to take his guidance. And one of the amazing things Allah loves about us is character. For the Prophet, peace be upon him, did say, As a matter of fact, I was sent in order to uh, help to perfect the matters of good character. It means that some people, they had good character, even if they were not Muslim, but there are two meanings to it. Number one, they had good character, but there was still more in order to perfect it and the Prophet peace be upon him completed it for us. And the second meaning is that some people consider certain things to be good character, but they're not. So the other meaning is to also correct your understanding of certain aspects of good character. Such are the messengers of Allah. The next verse that we're going to talk about, continuing Surah Al-Hujurat is وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Three words, which means and do not taunt one another. The word taunt is a little bit loose. It actually has a more comprehensive meaning in Arabic. In English it's just taunt, but in Arabic talmizu. And lemmas is quite familiar to us from another surah, isn't it? Another surah that we remember is وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ Lemmas, Lumaza appears again in another surah. But this time Allah also mentions humaza. So we've got in Surah Al-Hujurat, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا لُمَزَ And in another verse, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَ لُمَزَ What is the difference? Lumaza means to slander, put down, talk behind a person's back, backbite them, say stuff passively behind their backs. Uh, ruin their reputations in a very sneaky way and then appear in front of the person as if you're their friend. Two-faced person. In the other verse, humaza, it means woe to every humaza and every lumaza. The difference between the two is that humaza is in your face, lumaza is behind your back. And we are forbidden from both things. You have to be the same face in a person's face and behind their back. But I need to make a very important point. Some people, and I've heard this a lot, especially from younger people, they say, hey, I'll be bad to you in front of your face and bad to you behind your back. No, 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 no. That's not what it means. Remember, we are brothers and sisters and the character of Islam has to shine even with non-Muslims. Don't be bad to them behind their back and don't be bad to them in front of their face. That's why Allah says, don't do that. Because that's how you break communities. That's how you break families. Just because someone says, I'd say it to his face. No, 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 that's bad character too. Why should you be so mean like that? That's not a society which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has advised us to grow in. And definitely a community cannot grow and be productive with love, care and good relationships. In fact, think about our children. If we do that in front of them, then our children will do the same. And we start getting reports from school and we start to become defensive. You know, as a teacher, I sometimes see where some parents can't handle hearing stuff about their children. You know why? Because psychologically, this is what I've learnt and seen. They feel that the attack is on them. And that's like almost a self-confession that you're guilty. Um, again, we don't want to uh, accuse or uh, think wrong about our brothers and sisters or anybody like that. But you do see it. And sometimes we see it in ourselves. And we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. Woe to every person who is... Uh, a taunting person to your face and taunting behind your back, putting other people down. Lumaza has another meaning as well, which is subtle and humaza as well. And that is when somebody makes symbols and signals. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that's what they did to him and the companions, the disbelievers of Mecca. It was one of their ways of cancelling other people out. 
It was one of their ways of making other people look down on the companions and the Prophet peace be upon him because they couldn't make them or convince other people that they're saying falsehood. They failed in that. And when a person can't put another person down intellectually or through intelligent discussion or through evidence, they start to resort to the cheap stuff. Call them names, taunt them, say false things about them, or mix the false and the truth together just to make the other person look bad. This is a terrible, terrible character and we should never walk towards there because it's going to come back and bite us in the back. Allah says in the Quran, for example, in Surah Al-Munafiqun, that those believers who used to be taunted that way, because you see, when you're taunted like that with Lumaza, it's so subtle that it's so hard to defend yourself. Have you ever seen, again, on social media, since everybody uses social media, some people, they taunt you with their comments and they put you down. There's no real substance. There's no real um, justification. It's just putting you down and it really hurts and it makes other people feel, oh, uh, I better uh, not you know, stand with that person because he or she is, you know, they're getting the, the floor wiped with them. And it affects other people just to take stances and not be able to stand up to defend them through this bullying tactics, through this abusive tactics. No, we have to stand up for each other. And you feel that you can't defend yourself. If you reply, then they'll say, oh, you're just the same. If you don't reply, people will say, oh, you know, I'm going to stand against this person as well. And you feel that you're alone. The solution to that is you just got to look past it. They used to come up to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. One time, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was giving out charity that was given to him to give out to the companions. As he was giving it out, some men who were still new to Islam still had this character of Lumaza. And behind the Prophet, peace be upon his back, they said, Look at the Prophet, peace be upon him, he's favoring some people more than others. A companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was righteous. He heard this and he said, Wallahi, I'm going to tell the Prophet, peace be upon him, about it. So he went and the other people ran away. He said, Ya Rasulallah, people are saying that you are favoring other people and I, do, you know, I cannot accept that. What is the Prophet, peace be upon him, going to do? Go after them, do what? It's not going to benefit anything. So he just said a common statement, just one thing. He said, remembering his brother Moses, السلام, Musa السلام, لقد أوذي موسى بأكثر من ذلك فصبر. Moses was taunted even greater than that. He remained patient and persevered and kept going. فأصبر. I will also be patient and persevering. If the Messenger وسلم, had to deal with that, then don't worry. The best of creation Know that, inshallah, you're okay. Just continue to do the right thing and make sure that you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the bully, well, people are going to soon know what they're really like. And I'll tell you something. As a teacher, I see students do that to each other. And sometimes I hear about long-term friends. Overnight, they become almost like enemies. And I wonder what actually happened between them. They would have gone on their social media group chats at home and someone would have said something about someone else and suddenly a long-term friendship is severed. And the first thing I realize about these long-term friendships that are severed, you know what they do? Is that they start to talk about their flaws and their secrets that they knew about them. And they spread it. That's because the type of friend they had was the type they used to talk about other people. You have two friends and they're not good friends in the name of Allah. They're just friends because they have the same uh, agendas or the same needs and wants. But if those two friends are used to talking about other people, slandering other people, uh, putting down and taunting other people, then one day they're going to taunt you as well. In fact, they probably are doing that right now already. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, The closest of friends in this world on the day of judgment are going to be the most vicious enemies to each other. 
إلا المتقين except the friends who used to fear Allah. What does that mean? It means that friend, when he, he or she heard their other friend taunting someone else, they stopped them. They advised them. They said, look, they'll say to each other, we are friends based on the love of Allah. And if you're going to be my friend, that's what we're going to be friends upon. Those are true friends, not the ones who share dirty secrets about other people, not the ones who share in taunting other people just be, and, and in thinking, yeah, we are the true friends because we taunt other people together. No, that will come back to bite you in the back as well. Don't be among them. And that is another lesson that we learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully and simply put with three words. Wala talmizu anfusakum. Do not taunt yourselves. I just want to make a final point, but I just realized as, as I'm reciting it. Allah does not say, do not taunt one another. I mean, that's what it means. But he said, anfusakum, meaning yourselves. As if to say, when you taunt others, you are taunting yourself. And when you taunt others, you are ruining your own community and you're part of that community. So you are destroying yourself in the process. Don't do that and drown yourselves. Amazing words from Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth and the one who created our hearts and our bodies and our minds and souls. Protect them and protect our community. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.